Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. Before I speak at all, I ask permission from the ancestors of this valley for an uplifting message of truth that they will resound with. Dear ones, this is, for the listener, a place called Mystery Valley. We are giving this message, which is number seven, in the series called The Monument Valley Tour. Some of you may wonder what kind of place we're in because it echoes and the walls resound with the, the sound of our voice. It's an alcove which has a ruin at the top. And the group sits at the bottom against the walls to listen to yet again another message that was given in this very place. Could it be that there are places on the planet that are more conducive to healing and understanding and epiphany than others? And the answer is yes. It's already been mentioned even this day as to why that might be. Because humans leave an imprint on the earth. And it's difficult to explain that. For we have to get into non-linear concepts which so many believe are esoteric and yet they can be proven. When you walk into a battlefield of any kind where so many have died, there are those who feel the energy and will know something happened there. Even if you don't prompt them to say, well, this is an ancient battlefield, even if you take them for a walk and don't tell them where they are, they'll feel it. Some human beings are more sensitive than others. Some will feel it greatly. Some will feel it marginally. Some won't feel anything. But the question is this, is what are they feeling? What is the process where a human being could relate to something that happened in a place so long ago? And it happens daily, dear ones, that those would go into a place they didn't expect where something has happened and feel energies, and later they find out that was a burial ground or that was a battleground or that was sacred land in the past and so the object of the lesson today is to tell you that there are things that you don't know that are beyond that which you do and what you do know and understand so profoundly is the linear existence and reality you live in one step at a time, day by day, survival, making a living. And yet that is just a piece and a part of what real, actual reality is. It's so interesting to see what your scientists are discovering about multidimensional things. Now they are saying, well, there has to be at least 11, maybe as many as 22 dimensions as you walk around. And yet you're only aware of four. And so this whole idea of multidimensionality is not somewhere else. It's here. It's in the mud that you walked in to get to this place. It's in every cell of your body. It's just that your awareness only puts you into four of them. 
Why do I tell you these things? Mystery. Mystery Valley. Let's talk about the greatest mystery of humanity. The one that all wonder about and none can prove. What really happens when you take your last breath? What is it? The mysteries abound and have through the ages and through the cultures. If you take a look at how this is treated, overwhelmingly you see one single thing that is a commonality. There is ceremony around the passing of a human being. And the ceremony is different for each culture and profound in many. In some it is even guiding what they do next. Here, there's always been the idea of those that pass will go to a place and eventually will be accessible as the ancestors. Now this is not uncommon with indigenous all over the planet. It's intuitive as far back as you go. There is the idea that death is not the end of a life. It may be the end of a four-dimensional linear life of a corporeal body that walks around, but it's not the end. And it really doesn't have much to do with religions or belief systems. It has to do with common sense and cultures. My partner took me to a place far away in the southern hemisphere, an island, five hours off the coast of Chile, called Rapa Nui. Some call it Easter Island. And they had their ancients. The Rapa Nui owned the land. They managed the land. And they are very aware of what happened in that place. And if you sit down and ask them, what about all of these odd statues? Some weighing 13 tons. And there's over 800 of them that still exist. And the interesting thing is they all face around the middle. They're placed upon the beaches and they face the island. And up to a few years ago, there was the idea, well, they're indigenous. That means they celebrated and worshipped rocks. <laughs> and then they realized that it was a lot more than that. That there was an elegance in that. And then when they talked to the Rapa Nui, finally, and asked them, what is this all about? The Rapa Nui said, these represent our ancestors so that they can continue watching over us and our civilization on this island as they have for thousands of years. Does that sound like anything on this land? And the answer is yes. Thousands of miles away, in a different hemisphere, you have the same almost identical idea that when you pass into another place and take your last breath, something grand happens. There's another kind of life. You'll find it even in the ancients that you can go and visit so profoundly. The Egyptians did it. They believed very strongly in the afterlife, not just for the pharaohs. You see in the Egyptian photos and the Egyptian history all that the pharaohs did so that they will go into the next life with the right accoutrements and the, and the right boats and the right weapons and the valuables. But maybe they didn't tell you that even down to the lowest peasant, every Egyptian goes into the afterlife. 
This is intuitive, dear ones. And the question, of course, remains, what's the afterlife? What happens, truly, in that last breath? There was a famous illusionist named Houdini who was so interested in what he called the occult. And he wanted so much to find out how to contact the other side of the veil. He spent a lot of money and hours with those who could talk to the other side and realize that most of them were charlatans and no one really could do it. And so he made an agreement. When I pass, he said to his partner, I'm going to do my best to get through to you. He named the, the times or the, the times of years to try so that they would both be aware. Him on the other side of the veil and his partner in, in 4D here. I'm going to contact you here and there. And I want you to listen because I'm going to really try. And nothing happened. So when you start to ask the question, not only what happens when you go, but can you then in some fashion talk to the ones who remain? And the answer is this, not in 4D, not to make an appointment, not to have a seance, although this will be controversial because many still do. It's not about a time on a clock or, or sitting at around a table and then calling someone's name. It doesn't work like that. That is so linear. Oh, but it works. I have given you information in the past about what I call the journey of the soul. To spirit, creator, you your soul is eternal. And whether you believe in that which reincarnates or not, it doesn't matter. Let's say you don't. Let's say you only believe you have one lifetime on the planet. This still works. That your soul is always there, always has been. Perhaps it's as old as spirit itself. Perhaps, as we have taught before, it somehow breaks off from the creative spirit and becomes human. But it has always been there. Inside you is a piece of that creator. That's the soul. And when you pass, it then returns to where it was. Now, over 80% of the earth believes this in that they believe in an afterlife. And so almost all the planet intuitively celebrates the passing of a human being into another form of some kind. And this is the lesson of the day. We've speaking so many times, spoken to you so many times about the difference between linear things and nonlinear things. And yet none of you, not one human, truly can put yourself in a nonlinear place. You can say, well, I've, I've dreamed there. I've had visions there. But all you've done in that is to watch a movie. You never have truly understood how things can be in multiple places at once. One of the most common experiments in early physics was that of the examination of light itself. Was it a particle? Was it a wave? Then they discovered it could be either. Then they discovered that it reacts to being looked at. Then they realized light itself seemed to know things. Then they realized that it could be in two places at the same time. Then they stopped looking. Entanglement is so confusing to the linear mind. For it speaks of the idea of one thing being in multiple places. 
at the same time. What appeared originally in the experiments as two things communicating over long distances instantly became the understanding of oneness. It's one thing in two places, one on a star far away and one on the earth, being one with both, and therefore there's no communication. They simply are one. That's entanglement. You can't grasp that with the human mind. It's impossible for you to put yourself in that place. But what I'm going to tell you this is that the ancestors who are here right now and listening are smiling and they're laughing because I'm talking about them. They have always been in this multidimensional place because of a thing we've told you about the journey of the soul. When you pass from this life, dear ones, you become part of that which is all dimensions. You no longer are restricted to this planet, to this earth. You exist in all dimensions in every single way, and that means that that soul of yours can be in one place, two place, 18, one million places at the same time, for you're one with everything. You want to consider your loved one still in a linear form with their body and their face and their mind and their consciousness and their thoughts and the way they looked. But all of that disappears after they leave this planet and they become magnificent, just like you do when you take your last breath. And that means those ancestors in this valley are exceptionally real. It is not simply a tradition. Long before this modern civilization that you belong to existed, indigenous all over the earth understood this. And the whole idea and the reason was that they could continue understanding the wisdom that didn't leave the earth with the last breath, but continued in this place there is what we call the crystalline grid which we have talked about before and it amplifies this the ancestors are those which passed and have come back now what makes this extremely complex to most humanity is that you will say well if they've come back how can they then be on the other side of the veil after all they're in this valley and that's when we don't answer <clears throat> Because you don't know what you don't know. For those who believe in reincarnation, I'll give you the biggest puzzle of all. I've told you that souls come back with an agreement to live with their loved ones, with their children and their grandchildren, and they remain with them to help them and guide them and love them. And those who believe in reincarnation will say, well, yeah, but what happens then? Because I think I know that they've also reincarnated. And the answer is, yes, they have. <laughs> they've done both. They're in two places at the same time, just like light. Are you confused yet? That's the grandness of the multidimensional soul. That's who you are. Now, I want you to think about this for a moment. I want you to prepare your children with something that perhaps is not taught to you in any place but this place. I want you to look in their eyes and say, there'll come a day when I pass. And it doesn't matter how I go. That's just in linearity. What is important is this is that a piece and a part of my soul, which you now know, is going to come back and going to be with you until your last breath. And I want you to feel me. And I want you to talk to me. And I want you to remember me like I'm really with you and I'm really there. 
And if you start telling your children that, they will make this more real than it is today. For in linearity, it is so difficult for you to imagine this one who has passed coming back and sitting on your lap in another form, not available necessarily in seance, but available personally, intuitively to you every single day. For those of you who have lost loved ones, you already know of what I speak. It's not an imagination. It's not just that which is intuition or hopeful that that person actually might be with you still. They are. And they're with you in a way that you can't even imagine. In every single cell, they are with you. And over a long period of time, dear ones, this is how the bulk of ancestry is built. And that is why the ancients can turn to the ancestors as a group, knowing they've all returned in some form of wisdom to help them. To help them and guide them in places like this. Imagine how advanced thinking this is for the ones who dwelt in this valley. And if they could listen now, and some of them can, they still are winking and laughing that at this time in 2019, we are rediscovering something so basic and so advanced and so elegant that they all knew. The ancient ones were advanced in this. <clears throat> they knew how it worked and claimed it and lived by it. And you can too. There are those in the modern age who've said, Cryon, they write to me. They say, Cryon, I am in a country where my ancestry is everywhere. I have no real ancestors like the indigenous did with one bloodline. I've done my DNA test and I am everything. How can this work in a modern day? Let me start by this. Do you believe in what I have told you about the esotericness of a soul? That you live after you die. And if you do, then how many past lives do you believe, light worker, you've had? And in that, how many have you met? How many have you loved? How many children have you had? In those lifetimes, esoterically, not the lineage that you measure with DNA. I'm talking about the esotericness. I will then tell you that how old you think you are, how many lives you think you've had on this planet, old soul, that every single one of those children you've had and loved and the parents you've had and loved are in your DNA now in an esoteric way. There are your ancestors. Did you ever think of that? Did you ever think that each one of you might have your own entourage, your own ancestors, as you walk along the street? It gets complicated. And to some, it gets eye-rolling. Because it's just not standard. It's not what you were taught. You've all lost people, dear ones, in the last years. Between the time my partner brought me to this valley and today, there have been at least two that we met here that are no longer here of the Navajo. I want you to picture for a moment every single one you've loved and lost, including those two, are right here. In a way you cannot imagine or believe or maybe talk to in a linear fashion, but that you can feel. And if they could have a message to you right now, they would say there's more than you think going on 
on this planet. There's more than you think in the shift, in the evolvement of consciousness. And they will say this, there will things will go away sometimes that you thought were so precious. But it's time for them to become one with other things. Things do not stay the same and the wind blows differently in different times. And then they would smile and they would say, we are always with you. We are always here. We are always available just like you're going to be for your children and your grandchildren. Let them know now. So that this will be part of their belief system. Just like it is in this place, on this land, in this culture, when they turn to their ancestors and ask them for guidance and wisdom and they get it. What happens in your last breath? More magnificence is what happens. It's time for you to celebrate that. And there'll come a time, perhaps, where the courageous won't do funerals anymore. They'll do celebrations. <laughs> and so it is.